first step is obviously the installation and configuration of the operating system, which is Oracle Unbreakable Linux x86 64-bit release 5, update 5, which is the latest and greatest available from Oracle today. The installation of the OS is pretty much a base install, a plain Jane of vanilla, nothing fancy. Uh, it, it is described in quite a bit of detail uh, within the guides available at brainsurface.com, so I encourage you to go through it. Keep SE Linux disabled. Uh, keep uh, your firewall disabled. Uh, things to remember. Um, after you're done your base install, most of the required packages, Linux packages required for Rack, come within the media that you download and install from eDelivery or OTN. But there are some others like uh, libAIO, um, compat libstidc, lfutils, uh, sysstat, uh, that you have to manually pop in your DVD or your virtual DVD for the Linux media and install them manually. That, that is also described in detail within the guide. After that is done, you go ahead and install, uh, download and install from OTN your ASM packages that are required for uh, the ASM version of grid, the ASM component of the grid infrastructure that we're installing right now. And after you're done basically creating your base OEL uh, or Oracle Linux 5.5 machine, you go ahead and save a version of it as a save point, if you will, which is highly recommended, although ne not necessary, so that you can revert back. That's one of the, the big reasons that you have these 60 gig or 70 gig save points at different uh, steps of the installation configuration process, so you can go back to the prior version without having to do all, all of the stuff all over again. Rack is not hard to install. It's, it's pretty easy, especially with 11G R2, but it does require a lot of preparation at the OS level. So, so first step, create your OEL base machine, clone it, and import the appliance that you've exported within Oracle VM Worship Box, and go ahead and create your very first node. Some of the steps during the OS preparation that I, I just talked about or covered uh, are the installation of the packages, some of the configuration files that you have to add extra entries or modify entries, setting up your NTP, your network time protocol daemon to be up and running. That's also a requirement as part of 11G R2. Making changes to miscellaneous files such as your grub.conf, uh, bash profile, and such, sysctl, uh, etsy security limits.conf. All of these are um, explained in quite a bit of detail in the guide. Adding the required OS groups, which are DBA and O install making the oinstall group the primary for the Oracle user, creating the Oracle user, uh, giving proper permissions to the Oracle user. These are all parts, uh, this is all part of the OS preparation as well. It's a good idea to include, uh, to increase the size of temp FS, uh, or, or temps, I'm sorry, temp, uh, temps, uh, create a RAM drive, basically, so make things a little bit faster. And the last step is the installation of the guest editions package. That's a factory package by VM Workshop Box. All you have to do is click the menu button on top and we'll install the necessary software to get the, that's not required. However, it's, it is recommended because it allows you to copy paste to and from 
your virtual machine console and your host OS such as Windows. And that is followed by using the VBox Manage utility uh, that is supplied by Oracle VM VirtualBox as well and is used to manage all your virtual machines as well as your other virtual infrastructure at the command line interface level. You can use the VBox Manage Create HD and then use a the same command with the shareable switch to make your emulated shared hard drives shareable uh, and attach them to your first virtual node. Jeremy's going to tell you a little bit about uh, Etsy hosts and the two virtual NICs or two NICs. Before he begins, uh, I'd just like to remind everybody that the, the entire process from A to Z, what we're doing today, is 100% identical. If you were to be doing this in a physical production uh, world, there's no difference anywhere. The only difference being in the underlying hardware or the underlying infrastructure. But as far as these steps are concerned, you can take that exact same guide and use it to create a physical, real-world cluster based on real physical hardware. Jeremy? Now we're going to look at the network configuration. The network configuration, a few people have asked questions about the network configuration uh, in the questions panel. It would be worth just uh, briefly talking about this at the VM level first. Um, one person asked if, there, if you need uh, several physical network cards in your laptop, and the answer to that is no. All of, as far as the, the virtual box setup that we're doing now, the, uh, the, the networking is all virtual, so you don't need a physical network plug in your laptop. Um, we didn't talk much about how to configure that networking in VirtualBox, and maybe if we have time later, we'll come back to that. The network configuration for Rack itself Oh, and we just switched away from that, but that's okay. Uh, the network configuration for RAC itself, uh, there's a couple notes that we put in here on the slides, which were modifying the Etsy host file. It's good to statically put your host names in Etsy hosts. If the DNS service ever disappears, or if there are any problems with DNS, it's good. You don't want your cluster to unnecessarily crash. So it's, a very, it's certainly a best practice to do this. Um, the second virtual network adapter is for the interconnect, and the interconnect, um, I could talk about this for a long time, the interconnect is the most important component of a cluster database. In a cluster database system, you're taking multiple servers, and you want three or four servers really to act like they're a single computer system. So that, that interconnect, the network connection between the servers, really acts almost like the memory bus does in between the CPUs of the system. So if your interconnect is slow, it will have a very, very, very big and bad impact on the performance of the entire system. So it's very important that you have a fast enough interconnect. Nothing less than gigabit Ethernet is really, is really advisable or acceptable. Uh, higher, a lot of people will bond multiple gigabit Ethernet connections together if there's a lot of traffic over the interconnect, or in the case of Exadata, they use a 20 gigabit um, fiber connection in between them. So there are uh, several different options there, but it's very important to make sure the interconnect <coughs> is configured correctly. Uh, Syed is also going to say something briefly about the network adapters. Uh, did you have some any, any additional notes on that, Syed? Uh, exactly. Uh, once you have a <coughs> minimum of two NIC adapters, you need to configure these in order to proceed with your installation. <coughs> so, in the uh, Tariq, can you go back to the previous slide, please? <coughs> sure. Uh, 
All right. So I'm going to explain you about uh, how to configure your network adapters in the OS. So uh, once you have your two network adapters ready, so log into the system, first system as a root user, and then since we are doing it on uh, Oracle Enterprise Linux, you have to go through the network settings, uh, go to the system and administration, and choose the network option. So you will see there all your network adapters. Basically, you will see with the name ETH0 and ETH1. One will be used for the public interface and the other one will be used for the private interface as just explained by the German. You need to make sure that the public and the private they should not stand on the same subnet. It must be different from each other. And also you need to define the default gateway for the public and for the private you should not define any def default gateway. And make sure that you have only two network adapters configured. If you have more than two, sometimes you see more than two with the uh, nickname that extension that back. So you can deactivate them and uh, you can remove them without any problems. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Thanks, right? yeah. Um, We actually skipped uh, about 15 percent of our slides due to shortage of time for session one. And as part of the second half of this session, which is the installation of the database cluster database home as well as a small clustered rack database on the infrastructure that we're setting up today, uh, Jeremy, Syed, and Bert will cover the remaining slides as well as take your questions. Quickly switching back and While you're switching back, I want to bring up one more point. In sure. a typical production environment, you would want to make sure that you're using jumbo frames on your private uh, network or your interconnect. But this is a virtualized network, so everything's essentially being done in memory. If you were to set up the jumbo frames, you're not going to get the same 10 to 15 percent or better improvement because it's just not the same bottleneck. Uh, when it's done in memory versus actually going through a real network. Thanks, Bert. And to top off the first half, we basically just covered and showed you live that the grid in infrastructure installation process, and it went all the way to the, to the end. It went well. And so now, basically, our grid infrastructure, which is automatic storage management plus our clusterware is all set up, ready, configured to go. The next step would be to fire off the database installer, uh, the database Oracle Universal installer to set up a small cluster database. That process is very similar to setting up a single server, single instance, the only difference being that you set it up on a clustered infrastructure versus a, a single infrastructure. All of that is 100% uh, covered through the GUI wizard-like screens of the OUI. So you, all you have to do is fill in the prompts and keep heading next, e entering next, um, and we'll do everything automatically for you. And with that, I pass it on to Jeremy, who will drive the second half of this presentation. Thank you. <laughs>